Garmin might be releasing a Whoop alternative without a subscription very soon. We don't know much, but Garmin just accidentally leaked some information on a new device with some indications it might be a screenless strap. Now there are a few parts that make it seem more like a watch to me, but I wanted to take this opportunity to outline what Garmin needs to do, in my opinion at least, to create a viable Whoop alternative. Especially since I definitely won't be getting early access with my focus mostly being on data accuracy and device performance. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now some of my requests here at the Garmin will be backed up by data in a second, but to start off with, a device that has this kind of form factor will likely have to have a strong focus on health and recovery, at least for most people. So that means that the sleep tracking needs to be very good. I actually just finished a sleep study together with the University of Salzburg where we tested different wearables on 19 different people for 5 nights, including nights with bad sleep. Now there's one thing that Garmin actually did pretty okay and that's deep sleep tracking, but what it did not do well is REM sleep tracking. Let me actually show you. And right here we have an overview of the sleep testing results from that manuscript. Now these are still preliminary results, but nothing much will change right here. So this is from the manuscript that Pavlos wrote. And this is all based on testing against polysomnography, which is the most reliable way of measuring your sleep stages. This is also not absolutely perfect, but the best we have, and it's used universally across sleep science. Now this is based on a combination of both the Garmin Vivo Active 6 and the Garmin Venue 3, I believe. But basically across the entire Garmin lineup currently, all devices use the same sleep stage tracking. So these are used as an example here, but you won't get different sleep tracking from any other Garmin device. Now this is slightly different than normal. So now on the left here, we have the reference device and on the bottom, the combination of the two Garmin devices for a total of 127 nights. Now, if they would agree perfectly, all values here on this diagonal should be 100% basically. And if we look at these values, we see that light sleep and deep sleep agreement are pretty okay, both at close to 70%. However, the REM sleep agreement isn't very good at 49%. Almost the same amount of what the reference device said was REM sleep was detected as being light sleep instead. So REM sleep is really something that the Garmin algorithm cannot detect very reliably. Awake detection also wasn't very good, but this seems to be a common feature of many wearables. They underestimate awake time. So REM sleep tracking is really something that Garmin could or should improve. But just for comparison, let me show you how, for instance, the Aura Ring performed for sleep tracking. And right here we have a similar matrix, but now for the Aura Ring. And as is pretty clear, the values along the diagonal right here are much closer to 100% and much more consistent over all the stages. Both light sleep, deep sleep, and REM sleep have an overall agreement of roughly, let's say, 75% or so. Again, awake time is mostly underestimated by the Aura Ring, but overall, this is a much more solid performance than we just saw for Garmin. And this also agrees with my personal testing. I'll quickly show you that, and then we'll move on to the next things I think should be included in the new Garmin band. And here we're looking at my results for the Garmin Venue 4, which is my most recently tested device with the sleep stages as detected by the Venue 4 here on the left. And the sleep stages according to my reference, which is an EEG device, so not quite as good as polysomnography, but already quite close. Those are on top right here. And again, we want those diagonal values to be as close to 100% as possible. And we see very similar patterns. Deep sleep agreement is pretty okay. Light sleep agreement is pretty okay. However, a REM sleep agreement really isn't very good and most confusion is with light sleep. So very similar to what we see in that standardized testing that we did in the sleep lab. So again, this confirms to me that even though my testing is far from perfect, it's not the perfect reference device, it's just on me, but it shows generally very similar patterns to bigger testing and I can actually test the latest devices. Whereas in any research that we do with peer review, with analysis, it will just take so much time that most often already a newer version of a device has been released. And I actually saw very similar patterns for other Garmin devices. Let me show you that. And you can see that in this overview right here, where the average agreement weighted equally for all of the sleep stages is along the horizontal axis, and the agreement of the worst sleep stage is along the vertical axis. So this is based on my testing, and I exclude awake time detection here because this is something also my EEG device overestimates a bit. 
But you can see, for instance, the Garmin Venue 3 here, the Garmin Index Sleep Monitor, the Garmin Venue 4, the Garmin Phoenix 8. Most newer testing of Garmin devices I've done is in this area right here. So somewhere in the middle of all devices. And they tend to be a bit lower here along that vertical axis. And that is because the REM sleep tracking usually has an agreement between, let's say, roughly 35 and 50%. So most Garmin devices will be in this range right here. So even though the light sleep tracking and the deep sleep tracking isn't bad at all, because the REM sleep tracking isn't that great, it's quite low along the vertical axis and that's why most Garmin devices end up right here. And other brands like, for instance, the Aura Ring, both the 3 and the 4 with a newer algorithm, but also the Pixel Watch, the 8 Sleep Pod, the Apple Watch, all of these do better because they're much more consistent over the different sleep stages. So for me, that pretty clearly shows that Garmin still has some steps to take in terms of sleep tracking. If you want to know more about the study, the very preliminary preprint of this manuscript should be up soon, and I'll make a more detailed video about that study at some point. Now, the postdoc who led this study actually presented these results recently at the conference of the German Sleep Medicine Society, and I was also allowed to share my YouTube results as well, which were surprisingly well received by sleep scientists. Now, getting back to a screenless Garmin strap, sleep is important for us to perform optimally and that also includes some kind of score for how ready you are to work out and some kind of sleep score. Now these are things that Garmin luckily already has in the form of their body battery mostly I would say but also their proprietary sleep score. However, I would love to see some improvement in the app itself. First of all, I would like to see all those elements compressed a little bit in the app so that I can get my key metrics quicker in the morning at a glance. Honestly, much is there already somewhere in the app, but it just feels a bit cluttered and disorganized to me personally. I would also like for the active intelligence part to be more in the background for those of us that have a Garmin subscription. For me, that's just too much at the forefront and not that relevant most of the time. And for the first page of the app, I would just want to see everything at a glance so that I know how I recovered, how I slept, and also what workouts I've already done, what my body battery is, all those things, just in the first half of the screen already. Of course, if there is a Garmin strap coming, there also needs to be an easy and quick way of starting a workout in the app itself, similar to how we now do it for Aura or Whoop. So it would require some general redesign of the app already, so that would give them the opportunity to improve even more. I would hope it wouldn't be a separate app for the band, but just a general overhaul of the current Garmin interface. Now, I would want that option to easily start a workout in the app, but in addition, there also needs to be some kind of automatic workout detection, which isn't always easy. For me, the Polar Loop, for instance, does this reasonably well, but it does split up an exercise if I take a short break in between, and there's no real intuitive way of afterwards combining these workouts in the app. So I would hope Garmin implements this well and robustly. Now, in terms of heart rate accuracy, I also have some requirements there. I would hope that they include the latest Garmin heart rate sensor and also very different sizes of the actual strap part included so it can be worn both on the biceps and on the wrist because on the biceps you usually get better performance of the heart rate sensor. I can actually show you for three different brands of bands that have already been released how the performance is on the wrist and on the biceps. Let me give you a quick overview. And right here we have an overview of the heart rate tracking performance during different exercises so those are along the horizontal axis. So indoor cycling, outdoor cycling, running and weightlifting. And the correlation with the reference device is along the vertical axis. So basically you want that red line and dot to be as high as possible. And each other black dot right here is a competing device. So the better the whoop strap is doing, the higher that red line. And compared to the competition, usually the whoop strap is somewhere in the middle of all devices, even slightly below the middle for most devices. So the percentile at which the whoop strap is is usually below 50%. Only for running is it at 56%, so at the 56th percentile. So this is okay, but not great. And even when worn on the biceps, at least on me, it's not an amazing device but we definitely see increased correlations and slightly increased percentiles. Let me show you. So we can see, for instance, that now the correlation for indoor cycling is 0.98, whereas previously it was at 0.95 when worn on the wrist. So wearing it on the biceps definitely gives better performance. 
for a biking ride here, the correlation is now 0.89, whereas on the wrist it was slightly lower at 0.87. And also for running, for instance, we see that now the correlation on the biceps is 0.93. Whereas when I wore it on the wrist, it was 0.95. Now these aren't drastic improvements, but definitely some improvement for the whoop strap. But I have two more examples to show you, so let's do that. Now actually for the polar loop, the improvements weren't that large, but this is a very initial test. I'm now doing the full test. But if we look at biking, for instance, the correlation on the wrist is 0.72. Whereas when worn on the biceps, it goes up slightly to 0.75. I actually didn't test it for running, so that's hard to say. And the performance was the same for cycling indoors. Again, this was a very initial test. My full review should come out in two or three weeks, I think. I'm really excited to retest it now that there have been some updates. But as a final example, I want to show you the Amazfit Helio strap. So to start off with, let's take a look at the performance of the Helio strap when worn on the wrist. So it's already doing very good for cycling indoors. However, for biking outside, there's definitely some improvement possible. The correlation is 0.9 at the 55th percentile. And for running, it's pretty good already at 0.98. But let's now take a look at how it performed on the biceps. And as you can see, it really improved a lot. So the red lines are now very close to a 1.00 correlation, which is the best correlation possible. So for instance, for biking outside, the correlation went from 0.9 to 0.99, and it's now at the 98th percentile. And even for running, it went from a correlation of 0.98 to 1.00 at the 99th percentile. And potentially even the performance for spinning improved from 0.99 to 1.00. I think the Amazfit Helio strap is the most clear example of how wearing a sensor on your biceps performs better than wearing the same sensor on your wrist, at least in many cases. So that's why I would hope that if Garmin releases their band or loop or whatever they're going to call it, that's a screenless device, you're also going to be able to wear it on your biceps. So that's heart rate tracking, but one of the biggest hopes I have with a new Garmin strap or band is that there's no subscription required. Garmin already introduced their paid tier in the app Connect Plus a while ago, which I would not at the moment recommend you get since the features are pretty limited. However, if they require a subscription with their band, that would mean they're going further down the rabbit hole of having people pay every month, which would be very disappointing. I honestly didn't originally expect Garmin to release a paid tier to their app since it doesn't really seem to match their general vibe and philosophy. But of course, if there's money to be made, most companies will do it and it makes some kind of sense just from an economic perspective. From what I like and what I would like society to be like, it's not ideal, honestly. However, now that they did, who knows what happens in the future. Again, we don't know for sure if this latest announcement is really the Garmin screenless band or strap, but it's very likely regardless that one is coming soon. I hope that somebody at Garmin is watching this video and takes some of my considerations into account. I would also be really interested in your opinion. What would a Garmin band or strap need to look like for you? What are the vital features that you really need? Now, of course, I'll test the device as soon as I'm able to, but there's honestly very little chance that Garmin will give me early access since they work with a very select number of early reviewers and they've never given me early access before. If you want to help me increase the chances of getting early access at some point, maybe, it would really help if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. Now, if you do decide to get a Garmin watch, an Aura ring, a Whoop strap, a Polar Loop, an 8 Sleep Pod, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper or coffee beans, you want to get the best discounts possible in most cases and also support the channel, you can use one of my affiliate links in the description below. You'll be supporting yourself and the channel at the same time. Now, I think you will like this video on the best sleep trackers and this video on the Polar Loop.